What time is it? It's football time. Oh, we should have coordinated on that, huh? Yeah. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Wednesday. It's week one. We are breaking down the Thursday and Friday night football games. Never thought I'd say that talking about the NFL. What's up? It's Brian. It's Brennan. It's too much fantasy football. How we doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Just another heat wave in Southern California. It's supposed to be 103 degrees today. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's a lovely 70. It was actually a little breezy when I was out on the porch earlier. Yeah, I had yeah, to come inside. Must be nice. A, oh, a sweater, a cardigan, you mm. know. <laughs> God, that nice. sounds miserable. Do you know what else yeah. is miserable? Not having football 24 hours away. And that is exactly the seat we are sitting in because we are just a mere hours away from kickoff. It's it's the Chiefs. It's the Baltimore Ravens. I, I brought my purple, you know. Not really supporting the boys. It just happened that way. Gotta say, that's terrible as a Colts fan. Like that's just <laughs> awful. Hey, I feel bad. We up and stole a team just out in the middle of the night. Just took it away from Baltimore. You know, we got to give them back a little bit. Some, some. Boo hoo. You know what yeah. else is uh, miserable for you, Brian? Because we can get into the news here. Because oh, we want to talk about something. Because you were so excited yesterday about a player. Because you never once have owned him. You had no, you know, no animosity towards him. How's the animosity now, Brian? <laughs> listen here i don't want to be here i don't want to talk about this it's it's kyle pitts dealing with a hamstring injury uh hamstring issue they've been very coy about it trying to downplay yeah. it we haven't even gotten word that he's gonna like in risk of missing this week but either way i don't like messing with hamstrings i don't have them myself i can't even touch my toes but for that reason i've never pulled one you know uh, where are you at right now uh, where are the alarms zero to ten it sounds like he's only going to miss a couple snaps, but that could be just be player talk saying that. I mean, like, I mean, you're going to start him. Like, you're going to, I mean, you're not really going to panic unless it's, you know, it's really desperate. But I, I'd say I like got a worry meter one out of 10. I'd say like a two. It's a hamstring because that could just be pulled in the middle of the game. But you drafted him as like probably like the six to eight tight end. So I don't know if you really want to pivot that soon. So. Hey, we talked about streamers yesterday. There could have been uh, <laughs> some guys that you might like over them. I don't know. It's hard. It's going to be a game time decision. We're going to have to wait and see. There's always a risk of him repulling it, but at the same time, you he's got more a higher chance of hitting a, a deep touchdown than any of the waiver wires guys do. Arthur Smith is gone, and yet we're going to re-see him this week going against Kyle Pitts, and he still might ruin his week for him. It's a revenge game for sure, but yeah. Um, I don't know. What else do we have? Oh, Jamar Chase is at practice. We don't know if he's actually practicing right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's just been he, spotted. <laughs> he's just been spotted. He's in the jersey. Uh, we just we really don't know a whole lot. So as it sits right now, he did return to practice and he does have a helmet on. So we're not sure. I think if anything, it does give you confidence that he's going to play this week. You know, if he wasn't going to play, he's missed all of this time, hasn't come in. Why would he show up today if he didn't intend on playing this week? Uh, we kind of talked about it beforehand. It seemed like it was just that tantrum. Hey, all these guys are getting money. I want money too. And he realized his franchise just, you know, we're, they're not ready to hand it over yet. Just like, so him and Dak sit there waiting. Looks like they're going to be playing out this contract year. But mm. T. Higgins, all those we're still panic. excited about him, right? Yeah, I mean, like, he, you drafted T. Higgins, like, probably, like, late fourth, early fifth. He knew what you were getting into. He's a wide receiver, too. That's his, that's his floor. I mean, his ceiling could be fringe, you know, wide receiver one. But, like, realistically, you know that Hill just finishes right behind Jamar Chase's numbers. So, I mean, there's no worry with him. No, no worry at all. But just that, that top end ceiling that we were expecting to get this week without Jamar Chase, that's eh, kind of gone. Yeah. Uh, Kyron Williams, we got all that freak out about him being on the punt return team. Well, <laughs> I think I think Sean McVay screwing with us because they just came out today, and Blake Corum, the the rookie running back, is on the kick return team. So I think they're just eliminating players to keep other. Like I don't I don't know what's going on here. I think I they're think just he's a, a troll. Laugh I think he's the bit. ultimate troll for fantasy football. I think he really likes to mess with people. And I'm here for it because Kyron, I, I still haven't wavered. I'm still down to to get him, especially with this discount that's falling at this point. Yeah. So uh, give me some Kyron. Give me some Corum. Oh, the kick returns. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Patrick Sertain. I know. DB signed a four-year, $96 million deal. Do we really care for fantasy? I mean, that's a 
I mean, he's typically, I mean, most people have him as like, you know, 1A, 1B is the best corner with him and Sauce Gardner. Obviously, you saw all the wide receivers getting paid. He's now the highest paid. I think he's at like $24 million a year. So I'm very curious to see if the DBs start, you know, starting getting their paydays now soon. Yeah, you can tell he chose money over happiness because uh, winning's not going to be in this DNA for a little bit. That's very true. Or, or or Bo Nix, the guy who started more college football games than any other quarterback, maybe he's coming in to save the day. Maybe. Nah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this Thursday night game. We do have a Friday night game. It's off in Brazil, but we'll get to that one. We have to start with the opening game, rematch of the playoffs. Uh, Ravens at Chiefs. This game's got a 46.5 point over under. Chiefs are favored by three points going into this. Where uh, Where's your initial thought go to thinking about this game? So my initial thought process in this game was like, all right, let's look at the teams and what they did this offseason. Like, I feel like the Chiefs actually made some pretty good moves this offseason. I mean, I know they lost the Jerry Sneed, um, but for whatever reason, the Chiefs are like a cornerback factory. They just produce them and they and they make really, really good. Like, you know, obviously people like to consider the Steelers as a wide receiver factory. The Chiefs are a DB factory. I don't know why that is, but they just always produce really, really good DB. So, I mean, that's why I felt comfortable trading them for a third round pick. Um, the Ravens, on the other hand, they they actually lost some pretty key players. They lost like I think like three offensive linemen on their starting yeah. line, so they had to like you know fill in some other guys to you know start there. Um, so basically, last year they played in the AFC Championship game, and it was you know it was a really really good game. It came down to just you know who had the ball last and simple mistakes like Zay Flowers reaching for the end zone and getting knocked out, stuff like that. But for me. That. I know crazy stuff, but like, honestly, and then Roquan Smith with the all time comment of if we just stop the run and make Patrick Mahomes throw the football, we have a better chance at winning. That's an all time quote from, <laughs> from a linebacker to talk about Patrick Mahomes. But my, my feeling of this game is I think the chiefs win. I think they win. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say comfortably, but I think they win by at least a touchdown. I think it'll be by a touchdown score. I know the spreads three, but I think they went by six or seven. I think it depends on whether it hits the over or the under. If this is a lower scoring game, I think that the Chiefs will definitely take it. Uh, I do like the Ravens' defense. It's continued to get older with a lot of those first-round picks they've taken over the last few years. So um, they continue to improve on defense. But like you said, they, the offense, they lost three. And one of their returning starters, the, the left tackle, dudes hurt all the damn time all the time so really they're bringing back just one and a half starters now the ravens they're very well coached team so this offensive line could improve we could see them closer to the top half than they are in the bottom half right now but if anything that just gives me confidence for lamar what does bad line mean scrambles where does lamar get more points more on scrambles than design runs so i think all in all this kind of puts them in a good position this team threw the ball a lot last year and they're very effective so i i think that some of that regresses just a little bit, and they're just going to be throwing the ball that much more. Despite having Derrick Henry, I still think we're going to see a very uh, heavy pass game. It's it's interesting. So the Chiefs ran a lot of one safety sets, um, and it really seemed like they were able to contain uh, Lamar, kept him from breaking around, scrambling, and stuff like that. It's going to be a little different with Derrick Henry. Uh, this yeah. <laughs> this run game is going to be effective. It's going to be efficient. Uh, so I, I think the big chance here for the Ravens are, do they hit the over? Do they give this opportunity? And they've got uh, Mark Andrews. We didn't have Mark Andrews in that first game. We saw Zay Flowers get peppered with targets, but uh, Mark Andrews definitely helped spread the field out a little bit more. I think Mark Andrews was playing, but I think it was very limited because I know he just came back. Okay. I think he, I think it was very, very limited, though. But, yeah, I think Mark Andrews being fully healthy is a game changer for them for sure. I just – I think the Chiefs with getting, you know, obviously Rasheed Rice is, you know, not being suspended. Um, he's going to fill in as a wide receiver one. They have Xavier Worthy on the outside, Travis Kelsey. I just think with those three alone, I think it'll be very interesting to see how the Ravens, you know, try to coordinate the game plan for that. Because obviously Xavier Worthy's got, you know, all class speed. So they're going to try to keep him, you know, keep him homes from throwing a 20 plus yards. But Rasheed Rice is really good with the yak. So like, it's just be very interesting to see what their game plan is going into this game. And if they have to, they bust out the secret weapon. Juju Smith-Schuster re-signed with the Chiefs and Miko Hardman. So, like, we just got all of this elite talent running around here, right? Yeah. Yeah, Mark Super Andrews was uh, two for 15 in the playoff game. Yeah. I forgot he was uh, was back for that. Yeah. Um, I guess where are, where, where are you hesitant here? As far as, like, quarterbacks, I mean, you're not benching either one of these guys. No. You're looking at them as QB1s. 
So let's go through it, right? So Lamar and Mahomes, they're equally top five quarterbacks where you took them in, in your respective draft. So you're starting them. Not even, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the running backs here. So Derrick Henry and Isaiah Pacheco, you both took them as RB1s. You're not, you're not benching them. You're not doing anything else like that. You are starting them. They're locked into your lineups. Now let's go to the wide receivers for the Ravens. Zay Flowers, you took them probably in your fifth, fourth round. You're starting them. It's, it's one of your building blocks to your team. Um, Rashad Bateman, gross. Uh, I think the Quez Walker for the rookie, you're not starting him. That's gross. And then we can go to the Kansas City side. This is where it gets a little interesting. Rasheed Rice. I mean, you probably got him at a discount, which is great for you, but I'm starting him in this game. The only one that's a wild card for me right here is, is Xavier Worthy, their rookie. Like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm hesitant to start him this week because I just, I just want to see it. Yeah, same. If you're in a deeper league and you have to start him, I completely understand that. But most often where he went in drafts, you really should have other flex options. Yes. Um, not to say you can't play him. <laughs> He's the kind of guy that could bust off a play at any point. Uh, very, very top-end speed. But I, I would play others before I would okay. play Worthy, I guess. Let me give uh, you an options of guys that I think could be like around there. Like, Would you start Josh Palmer or Xavier Worthy? Palmer, I guess. Okay. I think both these guys are in wait and see situations. Um just but with Palmer being the, the you know the best chance at one, worthy at best is number three target on his team. Okay. Just curious to see where your head's at with like where you think his line is this week in regards to starting him. Well, yeah, Palmer's not fun to play with. Uh what about a uh, fellow rookie Brian Thomas Jr.? Which one are you taking over? Oh, Brian Thomas. I think I think the news came out earlier that he's he's already actually listed on the depth chart as one. Uh another fellow rookie, Marvin Harrison Jr. is listed as a number two behind Greg Dorch. Obviously, that means nothing because we're all gonna start Marvin Harrison Jr. But <laughs> I think it's funny that they did that. Um, but I'm trying to think of other names that just I guess that's around the Xavier Worthy area. Portland like, Sutton playing against Seattle. Oh, I guess I'm leaning Sutton just because I think he's the number one option. And I don't know where I think Xavier worthy. You're kind of hoping for like a Gabe Davis esque start like that, like three receptions, hundred yards and a touchdown is what you're really, really hoping for. Yeah. So just you're waiting for that really big, big play. And then we've seen it in practice, obviously. So that's what we're hoping for. All right. Last one I've got for you. Another number three target on his team, potentially JSN. Or Xavier Worthy. Ooh. I think I'm. I think I'm going to start JSN. I think I have JSN just a little bit higher. I think I'm just a little bit higher in JSN. I think I I would roll that dice because I think there's a higher chance that JSN is just taking over Tyler Lockett's job this year, and we get yeah. to see him used way more in this offense. Um. Yeah, I, I think that's where it's at. And the rest of these wide receivers, we're not, we're not touching Watson. We're not touching Sky Moore. Um. Bateman, are you even interested? To, like, are you going to be watching him to see if? Uh, Anything involves from this this offense? Not really. I mean, I I know he's probably taking over that Odell role, but it's just I just we've seen it now for a couple of years. Rashad Bateman had a chance to just do something. He's a first round, you know, first round talent. He just hasn't really come to fruition. So I just I think it's a little too late. I, if he blossoms somehow this year, that's crazy. But I just don't see it happening. I don't either. I was hoping you you had something for me there. Uh, Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey. I would, Need we talk about them more? I mean, the only thing we can talk about is how apparently Travis Kelsey had a planned arrangement with Taylor Swift. It's been going around the news. Oh, God. I saw that, and I was hoping that was the smallest, dumbest thing that popped in my algorithm. But yes, <laughs> folks, evidently, it's a sham. We've all been ousted. I think, been ousted. I think it was proven. It was like AI written. I don't know. No one knows exactly, but I think it would be hilarious if it was like a, a scripted relationship. I hope so at this point. Just give me all the chaos. <laughs> I hope so, too, just to piss <laughs> off my wife. <laughs> All right, to wrap up this game, uh, like we said, Kansas City favored by three. Who, who do you have winning this game? I have Kansas City. I can't bet it's, against Mahomes. I just, it's hard. It's very hard for me to bet against Mahomes. It, same, same. Uh, so I'm taking Kansas City as well. Um, as much as I want to take the over, I'm exciting. It's still a Thursday night game, and we're usually disappointed. So I'm going to take the under here. Yeah, the under hit last year, I think like 70% in week one, something crazy like that. So it's always safe to bet the under. I know it's boring, but it's just a safer bet. Screw it. You've convinced me. I'm taking the over. No, I'm kidding. 1-800-GAMBLERS, folks. 1-800-GAMBLERS. You have a problem? Call that number. 
please bet responsibly. Seriously. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to the next one here. <laughs> We've got the Packers and the Eagles, not in Philly, even though they are the home team. We're going down to. I was going to do a Brazilian accent. I don't even have it. I'm really intrigued to hear you do a Brazilian accent. <laughs> I can't wait for the Portuguese to come out. <laughs> oh God, we're. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds probably like Scottish, if anything. I'm so bad with accents. Uh, but, yes, we're off to Brazil here. Uh, Packers at Eagles. I'm super excited for this game. 48.5 uh, over under. 2.5 point favored are the Eagles. <laughs> we'll wait to get the wide receivers, but I'm super excited for this game. Uh, a couple of QB1s again. It's kind of a no-brainer, I feel like. Yeah, this game's really interesting to me because, like, the Eagles have, like, Obviously, they started off so hot last year, and then it just died out. And obviously, everything surrounding their head coach, Nick Sirianni, who, when he was hired, I said, why was he hired? He didn't call plays for the Colts. I, it's still now coming to fruition that they're, you know, struggling. This, this is basically his last chance at, you know, figuring it out with, you know, Kellen Moore and then Nick Fangio as the defensive coordinator. Um, I'm really intrigued, though, with the e Eagles but being with Nick Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore had a really, really high explosive rate when he was with the Dallas offensive coordinator. So I think guys like A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, I think they're all going to – I think it's going to be a you know, classic shootout game. Um, the only downside to this, though, is the Eagles are going to be without Devin White. They're starting linebacker. So it looks like Josh Jacobs is going to get a ton of run. That – and I think uh, Musgrave has a decent chance to have some work there in the middle of the field. Uh, usually when we see those linebackers out, we get to see uh, tight ends to have a little bit more success. So – uh, between all of the wide receivers that we're going to see out there, uh, if you're streaming a tight end, yeah, touchdowns fall. They might fall that way. Higher scoring game. Yeah, another thing, too, is the Eagles have a ton of rookie cornerbacks. Like, their first two picks in this draft were cornerbacks, and, you know, we just don't know how well. Rookie cornerbacks always take a little bit more time to, you know, to get into rhythm and everything else like that. So the Packers wide receivers might be all in play here. Be a possibility. That's that is true. Um, I hear their star wide receiver, their number one wide receiver, Christian Watson, coming off his longest streak of health in his, uh, well, probably his life at this point. I heard he pulled his hammy at three. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> but Christian Watson, I've got him as a borderline uh, top end wide receiver. Like you said, these cornerbacks, they've got they've got no like Bradbury's out for the year. They've got rookies out there. They have so many issues in the secondary, and now the linebacking core is missing their, a big piece. So. Christian Watson, I think he has the upside to give you a wide receiver one week. Put him in there as a wide receiver two, but I'm very confident that him and Reed will both give you wide receiver two numbers. I think this is a good week to start Christian Watson as well. I mean, we'll just see how he does and how the hammies hold up in the middle of the game. But, yes, I do agree. I think Christian Watson and Jaden Reed are definitely worth starting. You drafted him probably as your wide receiver two, wide receiver three, good flex play. Um, the only wide receiver that I think is interesting is Romeo Dobbs, like, all throughout camp, we've only heard that like this has been their best receiver in camp. So like, where are you leaning towards him? He's him and Wicks. I think there has been just nonstop buzz about these two. I mean, really, this whole group, but these two, uh, the third and fourth wide receiver for the Packers, have been getting so much buzz, and it's it's hard not to fall in love with it. You know, especially when you know that you know Reed missed a little time last year. Watson consistently misses time, so these guys can easily plug in. Uh, not not players that I'm looking to start, you know, definitely not, especially in week one, but uh, they're on my radar. These could be waiver wire ads as, easy, as early as next week. So uh, players I definitely want to watch, see how they perform out there, uh, just because I am excited to see what they can do. Very true. I mean, obviously, let's go to the wide receivers on the Eagles side. I mean, it's A.J. Brown, it's Devonta Smith, and then now they have Jahan Dotson. I mean... We're starting the the first two. It's the last one. I don't I have no consideration of starting at all. No, no start consideration at all for John Dotson. But the the news coming out of Eagles camp is is positive. I mean, obviously they traded for the guy, so they're not going to double back on that, you know, at all. Yeah. But uh, I, I do think it's going to be interesting. We've been craving to see a third wide receiver in this offense, not necessarily for fantasy, because you know it's hard to hold up three wide receivers while also having a stud running back and a quarterback that can steal touchdowns. But at the same time, it'd be nice to see confidence from Dotson running out there. So if and when A.J. Brown or uh, Devonta Smith go down, we feel comfortable plugging in Dotson as a flexible piece, you know, as a, as a fill-in player. Yeah, I'm on the same page with you on that. If one of them goes down, the obviously Jahan Dotson will be a probably a high bid fab for the waivers next week. So uh, let's go to the tight ends here. This will be interesting here. 
So we have Luke Musgrave and then we have Dallas Goddard on either side. I mean, in one of my big leagues, I took Dallas Goddard. There's really no other option to pivot towards. So I, I am having no choice but to start him. I'm okay with starting him this week. I think it's going to be a shootout game. So that's why I'm leaning towards it. I just, I don't know. If, I think Dallas Goddard's going to be one of those guys where you'll be frustrating owning him throughout the week, year for this entire season, to be honest with you, where he'll have some touchdowns and he won't. And he'll have like three receptions for 30 yards. And that's probably where he'll probably hover around. I think he's probably the fourth option in this offense. I, I look at it the same. I, I've got zero Goddard shares this year. He comes as a player that he costs as a top 12 guy, but he's a streamer uh, end of the day. I, I get that he has a, a top end ceiling that some of the streaming guys don't, but he's not somebody I consistently feel good about. Um, like you said, this this game environment you feel good about, just a high upside. They're traveling. Who knows what that's going to do to the players if we're going to have busted coverages, broken plays, even just dehydration. These guys are just being up in the plane for all that time. So uh, I, I think there's a lot playing into it. Uh, you know, Goddard could fall in. I think he's a healthy gamble just like Musgrave is, kind of like back end wide or tight end one this year or this week. Okay. Are you starting Goddard or Musgrave? You got to pick one. Which one are you going to start? I feel like they're kind of the same. I think that, uh, yeah, I was going to say I'd probably pick Musgrave, but I don't think there's a difference between the two at this point. Okay. Um, they're, they've are they got great wide receivers ahead of them. They are talented enough that they can pull in touchdowns whenever that happens. So uh, I think it's just you're playing with the game environment. I'm happy with either one. All right. What about you? You got a favorite? Goddard? I probably, I probably lean Goddard just because like, I'm a little more biased towards it, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Musgrave outscores him. Hell, Kraft could come in there and just completely cock block Musgrave. We never know. You know exactly. Both of those guys got to show as rookies that they're uh, viable tight ends, and you know the Packers just continue to find gold. It's not cheese in them hills. It's it's gold. <laughs> come on, it's cheese jokes. They're Packer fans. We, yes, he yes, get it, they are. He's a Colts fan. We don't have cool, creative stuff like that. That's true. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up for our Thursday and Friday night. Um, Wait, who are you picking to win? Oh, shit. Good call. Good call. Jeez. I was going to make people come back for more. Uh, yeah. I'm picking the Packers. Give me the Packers. I'm not a, uh, um, you know, just the head coach. I don't believe in there in Philadelphia. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick the Eagles. Kelsey. I think we pick- no, Kelsey, yeah. though. I, I just, I'm going to pick the Eagles. I think a lot of people are putting, pick, picking the Packers, so I just want to bet the opposite. So, and I'm going to pick the over, though. Yeah, I'm going to take the over as well. I, I'm really excited for the, all of these players. I, I think this game has uh, shootout possibilities in it, so uh, yeah. I'm going to take the over as well. Wait, so you take an Eagles? Oh no, they're favored. Take... They're favored. Yeah, I think the okay. Eagles. I think the Eagles are like like what minus one and a half. Is that what it is? Uh, I'm looking at two and a half here, but it, you two know, half, a little bit. Yeah, um, I'd still take the spread. Still, I mean, yeah, I'll take Packers money line. Give it to me. All right, folks, tomorrow we will be back and we'll be doing the huge main slate. The ones, the fours, all of those games. So get ready. It's going to be fast. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. And, of course, Friday we're going to come back at you with our DFS and betting spots. Just a little bit of everything. And, you know, just the, those irresponsible things. That's what we're here to do, deliver for I you. I can't wait to take Brian's money. Oh, he's going to take so much of it. It's, it's been so bad, folks. It's been I had to sell a dog. I got him back. The pawn shop's been weird about it. It's been terrible. But before we leave, Brendan, make sure that people know where they can yell at you for taking my dog and my money. <laughs> I'm at I'm X at FFAMB Mold. And then I'm in the fantasy group page for Fantasy Football Advice Network answering all your questions about Dynasty and Redraft. So. You can find me on X at too much underscore Brian. You can find me here all over the YouTube channel on our fantasy football advice network. Weekly shows coming at weekly. It's it's daily, folks. It's bad. It's exhausting. I'm going to see this guy so much this year. Uh, just wait. He's going to be ringing my neck through the screen by week 18. We can't wait. But until <laughs> tomorrow. Later. Later.